next up. And in my case, let me record as well. Okay, record. Excellent. Continue. Okay, greetings and good afternoon to all. Good good morning to the ones in the West Coast, like Javier, he is in from California. So thank you all for accepting our invitation to the virtual launch of the first edition of the Head Learning Technologies Leadership Academy, hopefully known very soon as H-LTLA. As a pioneer organization in the use of technology in higher education with enormous resources and expertise, Dr. Carlos Morales, our chairman, proposed this academia initiative to the Heads Board of Directors in the last board meeting held in February 2021. And this idea and proposal was approved right away. So we have been working during the past month since February to make this proposal a reality. And today we are thrilled to announce that we are ready to give you all the details of the Head Learning Technologies Leadership Academy and definitely invite you to be part of the first edition of this academy. We would like to thank our chairman, Dr. Morales, and our board of directors, of course, the academic faculty that will be joining us today and, and talking to you very soon, the evaluation committee members that we have some of them here so also to present to you and the head team. We have Delix Sakarin and Stephanie couldn't be joining us, but she worked very hard as well. And for their valuable collaboration with this initiative that aims to provide special support to member institutions as part of the head's mission to promote the integration of technology into education. Today, we are excited because we have more than 100 participants registered that show interest in this uh, initiative. Uh, right now, we we are around 40, but we hope hope, hope that the rest uh, at least uh, can join us during the event. We the the participants register registered from institutions from Puerto Rico, 15 different institutions in Puerto Rico, and we also have 15 uh, different institutions in the U.S. interested in learning more about the Head uh, Academy. And we have also uh, participants registered from private and public schools uh, and also in Puerto Rico and also some organizations. So thank you and reaching to all. We hope that all the information that we will be providing today help you uh, to, uh, find this new academy suitable to your professional goals to become one of the next generation leaders. The purpose of this event is to present this new professional development uh, online program, including its faculty, the curriculum, the application process that will be online, the evaluation committee members that some of them are here with us today, the registration fees, and also uh, at the end of the presentation, we will have uh, uh, a session to, uh, that you can uh, share your uh, doubts, ask questions, uh, not only to me, but also to Dr. Morales and the faculty members. Uh, to, in order to clarify all your doubts. Now we are ready to start, and I am pleased to present Dr. Carlos Morales, his chairman, who will be presenting the academy part of the, uh, Bella, a part a, of the details of the academy, and also our special guest today. And please re remember that we are recording, so please keep uh, your microphone on mute so we don't have any intro interruptions. Go ahead, Dr. Morales. Thank you, Jubelkis, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we appreciate your uh, attendance this afternoon uh, at the launch of the HEADS um, Leadership Academy in its uh, inaugural class, if you will. Uh, this is a freshly uh, developed uh, idea and initiative as part of the mission uh, of HEADS in terms of um, not only uh, affording and sharing uh, resources in, in the use of instructional technology, but at the same time to continue to uh, afford our members with um, 
content, professional development activities, and opportunities to develop a learning community and a collaborative community among a, a, our members. So with that said, um, I, I, as, as Jubelki mentioned, the, the academy uh, um, originated uh, out of a discussion in terms of uh, creating additional and more uh, pertinent and more robust uh, professional development opportunities for our members. And, and knowing that the majority of our members are uh, Hispanic serving institutions, if not all of them, right? Uh, we, we found that um, uh, there are not that many uh, leadership uh, academies or leadership programs that combine the element of uh, instructional technology, academic technology, distance education, and, and associated arts, as I as I say, with the element of a uh, Hispanic learning, inst Hispanic serving institutions. I'm sorry, and uh, this aspect of an academy. So uh, that that is pretty much the the genesis of the of the concept. And um, we are uh, very excited in terms of the potential for this um, academy and in terms of what we will be able to uh, deliver to the audience and how the audience can uh, um, maximize uh, the benefit of the academy. You, you are seeing uh, some of the purpose behind uh, the, the academy, which uh, in a nutshell, uh, we are uh, focusing on developing the next generation of leaders uh, to serve uh, Hispanic serving institutions in ways that allow them to promote and facilitate the adoption of teaching and learning technologies. Uh, similarly, the, the program aims at enhancing um, uh, knowledge and skills in regards to those um, uh, professionals, those uh, leaders that are uh, in mid in mid uh, level or in midpoint of their careers, as they contemplate future roles uh, in leadership uh, levels at uh, at the college, at the university, and even school administration, knowing that instructional technology and and again associated arts are a, a completely a transferable uh, topics and completely uh, applicable topics to all those levels and also knowing that the the uh, heyday of online and digital learning has not passed uh, we are not done in that in that subject so uh, again there is very pertinent uh, content the one uh, the, the content that we will be uh, certainly sharing with you uh, on on that the other thing that is important before i go into the program format is the aspect that uh, the the academy focuses on the uh, challenges and opportunities that are present at hispanic serving institutions and how digital learning uh, distance education instructional technology project management accreditation and those associated topics uh, 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 need to be advanced and, of course, need to be infused with this aspect of um, the Hispanic serving serving institution. Um, the academy has been conceptualized in uh, uh, the format of synchronous presentations uh, uh, in in eight uh, different topics, and we have for that uh, 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 identified a uh, top. Uh, professionals in in their subjects as the faculty that will be uh, uh, delivering each of those topics and sharing not only their expertise but providing with uh, knowledge and applicability to uh, each of our of our uh, uh, three or four types of institution that we have in in our membership. As you know, uh, the the pandemic still uh, uh, with us, so um, the uh, academy will be uh, held um, uh, online in August 4 uh, to 6 of 2021, and those will be uh, delivered synchronously. And as I mentioned, the, the leaders uh, and the faculty has been already, already selected. Um, it is designed to provide uh, competencies, to provide uh, uh, professionals uh, with the necessary preparation to support uh, the uh, advancement and the progression of their institution in 
complex programs that uh, aim at integrating technology for teaching and learning as well as for informational uh, or information uh, technology. On the next slide, uh, the, the uh, important aspect that we are adding to this uh, academy, which is kind of unique, if you will, is the fact that the curriculum will be in English uh, uh, and or, or in Spanish. And as I mentioned before, it consists of uh, synchronous presentations uh, with, with leaders of the higher education community. There is an also an opportunity for uh, the, the um, audience, the attendees, to network with peers. Um, one of the things that we see uh, uh, very valuable in this type of, of endeavors is the fact that um, we, we, in one way or another, experience similar challenges at our institutions. And uh, by being connected and by being able to uh, network with others, we can get additional insights and perspectives on how we can address and how we can apply solutions to maybe similar problems. And when I say similar, they could be maybe 95%, 97%. Uh, same problems or challenges, but then the idiosyncrasies of our institutions is what make it, uh, uh, makes it a little a little different. Um, you see here also the aspect uh, that the curriculum aims at uh, helping uh, with the development of projects and initiatives at those institutions uh, in ways that they could be either new, they could be pending, or they could be uh, uh, currently occurring and to what extent uh, additional skills, additional knowledge, additional perspectives can be infused to those uh, with, do with those responsibilities in uh, uh, accomplishing and, and again contributing to those to those uh, initiatives. On the next slide, one of the things that is important to mention here is that uh, the academy aims at uh, developing competencies and skills uh, in the areas of uh, team building uh, working with uh, common goals, the aspect of the flexibility and the capability to uh, uh, retrace, redesign, reorganize uh, initiatives, also the aspect of decision making with consideration uh, and attention to people and how, again, the people as, as, as one of the most important assets of any organization can help us advance those those initiatives. Uh, there are also elements of uh, management, project management, budgetary uh, aspects as well uh, that we find very, very important as our work continues to be uh, um, um, being identified as a complex one. And of course, the complexities that are associated with institutions advancing, with their strategic planning, with goals and a, a particular statuses that they want to achieve uh, uh, based on, on the mission and vision and the direction of that uh, organization. Inclusion is also another, another topic that is important and how we can uh, create a, an organizational culture that allows us to advance an agenda for the benefit of the academy, for the benefit of our students with uh, the main aspect of student success in mind. The, the curriculum, and again, this is just the, the general aspect that we want to provide, and um, there is more detail on the website, as Jubelkis mentioned. Uh, there are eight areas in, in the curriculum, and you are seeing them uh, listed in, in this particular slide. Uh, you have the aspect of uh, academic technology, uh, online learning, uh, instructional and curriculum design, teaching and learning, uh, project management, accreditation, professional development, and data uh, for digital learning and how we manage uh, that data. Uh, uh, there is, again, uh, extensive information on the website in regards to each of these topics. Um, this afternoon, uh, as we are launching uh, the, the, the academy, uh, with me is uh, pretty much the entire faculty, if I'm not mistaken. Is that is that correct, Jubelki? We have the entire team here? Correct. Everybody's here. Yes. And, and as you are seeing in this slide, uh, we have assembled a, a, a group of uh, faculty members with vast experience in each of the topics that I mentioned before. Uh, they range 
in um, not only the focus and the subject matter expertise, also the type of institution, the location, the geographic location in which they are a, 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 a placed and how that context and how those cultures play a role in the topics and again in the information that we will be sharing with you. So uh, you see them here and I think that we can have each of them uh, provide you know a little a little uh, overview uh, of uh, their section and let's just use the sequence that we have here in this particular slide. Uh, I would like to start and of course recognize uh, my colleague uh, Francisco Garcia which is uh, the director of the Center for Online Learning and Teaching Technology at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Francisco, good afternoon and take it away. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you for the for the invitation to participate in this uh, in this uh, uh, event. Uh, as as Carlos mentioned, I'm the director for the Center for Online Learning and Teaching Technology at the University of Texas, and I've been working with the uh, educational technology and and online or distance education, I should say, for more than twenty years. When the video conferencing, the T1 lines and and ISDN lines uh, were only the distance education mode, aside from correspondence, right? Now the evolution of the web and, and, the, and the learning management system and other technologies, and now we're back to the video, to the web, right? So uh, mm -hmm. this is interesting how this cycle is, 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 is coming into, is taking place. Um, I just wanted to say that my topic in this uh, learning academic uh, uh, technology uh, initiative will be it will precisely uh, uh, academic technology, right? That's going to be my topic during this uh, during this academy, and uh, during this, uh, I guess, module, uh, we will be talking about not only talking about but discussing. It's going to be more like uh, Carlos was saying: is a a learning community. Um, there's going to be people who's going to bring some experience to on board, and of course, that will be more than welcome um, uh, as as we go through this academy. Um, but uh, going through this through this process is, like I said, discussing all those technologies and, and how important it is to implement technologies through this uh, uh, in actually in this uh, um, academic environment. Um, we we noticed right that the uh, that the pandemic was a a big push for uh, for the use of technology, um, and and many of us were forced to use technology without knowing uh, a, 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 or not having a good plan to implement technology in the, uh, in the academic side. So um, like I said, we're gonna go over this process, how to communicate uh, the advantages of uh, the academic technology with your stakeholders, which is one of the challenges that uh, we always have, those who work in the, in the technology or academic technology area, um, we have to sell, uh, the, the importance of use academic technology in, in nowadays, right? And sometimes the um, top administrators are not so familiar uh, and, and they need to understand in order to buy into these initiatives uh, of implemented technology, they need to know uh, the potential and how effective uh, will be the, uh, the use of the technology in the, in the academia. So some of the, some of the concepts, some other concepts that we're going to be talking about is, of course, e-learning. Right? Um, we're going to be touching about the importance to implement an effective e-learning environment, have some quality and and the uh, and the courses that um, will be delivered through the uh, through the at your institutions, and and of course some of the of the of the hot topics right now, at least in the U.S. continental U.S., which is accessibility and uh, universal design for learning. So in a, in a nutshell, those are the topics. Um, there's there's gonna be a video created uh, uh, to promote more in details um, what is uh, gonna be covered through the process. But again, if there's any questions, concerns about my topic in specific, just uh, reach out to me and then we can, uh, I guess, uh, talk about that and, and, and provide more information. And, and I think, thank you, thank you, Francisco. I think we have a few minutes uh, at the end uh, to to have, a, you know, to, to entertain any any questions from the audience. Excellent. 
Thank you, right. thank you, Francisco, for the overview. Yeah. I want to uh, call uh, to the stage, if you will, uh, my 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 namesake uh, in the East Coast, uh, Mr. Carlos Guevara, uh, director of the Office of Educational Technology at Ostos Community College in the CUNY system. So uh, he can talk about his topic of online learning um, uh, from his perspective. So, Carlos, you can take it away. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for for the invitation to this launching. We're very excited uh, for this unique opportunity in putting together, you know, very innovative uh, uh, leadership academy. And um, you know, it's been it's going to be a pleasure for for me and for the other members of the faculty to share our experiences in in the different. Uh, areas that we are going to be uh, focusing and, and connecting with the lens that, uh, that Carlos uh, shared uh, at the beginning. The idea is to make sure that we uh, help in positioning the participants to the next level in their careers. And you know, it is important for us to, to understand the, the implementation of the technologies, online learning, academic technology, um, all of the different aspects, but it's also important for you to be able to connect the the organizational culture aspect of in in uh, in the conversations and the way that you're promoting the different initiatives that um, that you're going to be working in uh, at your institutions. You know, from from the perspective of online learning, we're going to be focusing on uh, you know ways to establish structures, ways to establish uh, the, the foundations to promote online learning at your institutions, identifying what those, those needs are for your institution, those unique needs for your institutions, what works for you, and what potential strategies could be possible for you to continue, you know, to start implementing or continue promoting the way that, uh, that you have Online, online learning at your institutions and identifying the different the different aspects to make sure that uh, this becomes something robust and institutionalized um, in your in, in the, the different places. You know, we want to make sure that there is uh, intentional professional development, intentional assessment, intentional continuous improvement uh, elements in order for you know any projects that you're going to be embarking in, in terms of online learning are going to be successful and that you're able to clearly communicate the needs for this this uh, these initiatives to happen and, and succeed. And um, as as uh, as it was also it was also mentioned by Francisco, you know, the idea of making this or building a, a learning community through this academy is a key element because we want to make sure that you know we're learning from each other. You know, everybody is going to bring you know vast experience and knowledge, and we want to make sure that we tackle those those components and uh, from our perspectives and from our experiences, we're going to be able to contribute so that uh, you know you continue developing as well. So we are we are very happy, um, I'm personally very happy for this this uh, academy and then I hope that you join us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Appreciate the the information uh, this afternoon. Um, next, we have uh, Dr. Juan Melendez, professor at um, University of Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras campus in the department uh, or the College of Education. And uh, he's member of the uh, Systemic Advisory Board of Distance Education. So uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Juan Melendez, you can take it away. <laughs> okay, thank you, Carlos, thank you. Um, one, the first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation to participate in this historic event. Uh, it's, it's an honor for me to be here, really. Uh, I've been dealing with instructional design for many, many years, uh, not to say decades, um, but, 
uh, as you can see. Uh, and, and I'm seeing a lot of young faces here, enthusiastic faces. So that means uh, I've been in this uh, way, way before many of the, of the participants uh, have been doing this. Uh, as I see it, instructional design is not really a hard concept to understand. Um, we, we all know that planning is necessary. The, the whole problem is how to do it well. And, and my, my experience uh, has given me several premises to deal with when, when, we, when we talk about this, this subject. Uh, one is that many educators are contracted uh, to work at our institution because they have a strong background in their content areas. Um, though they come in with very basic levels of, of pedagogy. And, and in terms of this basic level of pedagogy, uh, we know that uh, they've learned about instructional design uh, really from their student perspective. And, and what was happening, and this is what the literature is telling us, is that they're teaching as they learned. Uh, and many have learned uh, years ago and decades ago, and, and things have changed a bit. And I think it's important for us to be able to, to more or less you know, get up to par in terms of what's happening here. There's a lot of research being done in terms of how people learn, and, and it's important for us to incorporate that. So uh, what we're seeing is that those that have been interested in instructional design have been doing it very mechanically, looking at the way it's been taught as, as models. And, and I think we have to go beyond that. Uh, it's not only just to discuss I, uh, instructional design models, but to really to, uh, to understand how to practice it, how, how to deal with it in, in a very practical way, combining theory and practice. And that's what we're gonna be doing uh, in, in my part here at the Academy. Um, my starting point will be trying to understand the science behind instructional design. And there's a lot of good research on that that we should be sharing. Um, the next point is, is understanding the philosophy behind instructional design. I think there's this confusion between how to teach our subject areas for culture and for those that are really are going to be practicing it on a professional level. And there's a difference to, to how to deal with it with, depending on who our student population is. And, and that understanding, I think, is important. And we're going to be discussing that. <laughs> Um, and from there, we're going to be getting into the art of instructional design. And the idea is to enjoy what we're doing and, uh, and, and really to, to do this in such a way as to be incredibly practical for us. So I think I'm going to be enjoying this. And I just hope that those that are really going with me in, in my workshop will be enjoying it also. So thanks again for the invitation. Thank you, uh, Professor Melendez, for for the overview about uh, the topic that you will be uh, um, delivering. Next in in the agenda, and one one important aspect that uh, I want to highlight is that uh, once again the element that uh, the the academy is in English and Spanish, and our resources, our faculty, of course, are. Uh, also in, in English and uh, in Spanish. And with that said, I want to introduce uh, to my colleague as well here, uh, Dr. Anna Milena Lukumi, uh, and uh, she is the Innovation Learning Design Manager at GEEO, and she will be uh, discussing the teaching and learning topic, and I believe it's gonna be a Spanish track. So, uh, Dr. Lukumi, adelante. Gracias, doctor Carlos. ¿Cómo está? Saludos a todos. Realmente agradezco esta oportunidad, ¿verdad? Eh, para ser parte de la Academia de Heads. Vengo siendo parte de los talleristas de mucho tiempo y hemos hecho algunos recorridos, pero en este momento esta academia particular, como está siendo eh, conceptualizada y como se está presentando hoy, eh, es necesaria desarrollar al facultativo para la docencia, para contextos andragógicos es fundamental. Y si bien cada uno está en diferentes niveles en sus universidades y tienen algunas iniciativas de desarrollo profesional, es importante eh, en este conjunto de, de diferentes universidades poder compartir experiencias y establecer este espacio propicio, ¿verdad? Para que en medio de este contexto global que ha impulsado, que ha acelerado, eh, la necesidad de, de tomar la educación a distancia, específicamente la modalidad virtual y todas las tecnologías que están emergiendo y siguen emergiendo, 
para facilitar esa conexión entre estudiante y profesor y que el aprendizaje ocurra, pues es bien oportuno tener esta academia de liderazgo y de, de aprendizaje para todos los que vamos a trabajar y a continuar trabajando en las IES. Así que este módulo suena sencillo, teaching and learning, pero es, son conceptos abarcadores, son sombrillas temáticas. Así que este módulo se centra en ese proceso de qué es lo que facilita la enseñanza y el aprendizaje y tiene el propósito entonces de crear un espacio que viabilice la discusión de los modelos que de alguna forma están en el siglo XXI, se ha, han prevalecido, pero con el momento pandémico han cobrado relevancia, ¿verdad? Retomar algunos aspectos históricos y también eh, entrar en unos procesos de innovación de una manera más rápida. Así es que estamos buscando siempre facilitar la integración efectiva de las tecnologías y las herramientas eh, tecnológicas para propiciar el aprendizaje del estudiante desde la presencia hasta la distancia, atravesando, ¿verdad?, por esa curva porcentual de qué a distancia, qué presencial, y que podamos considerar los aspectos que cada modalidad en sí misma reclama. Y no solamente mirar el modelo académico, un modelo académico en sí, en sí mismo no funciona solo, sino que tenemos que tener unos andamios para el estudiante a través de modelos de retención, modelos de servicio al estudiante, la preparación para el empleo. Hay una serie de factores que tienen que ver y conectan con esa discusión dentro de la sala de clase. Presentamos entonces estos modelos articulados para servir al estudiante, considerando las diferentes eh, modalidades de aprendizaje y también considerando que haya en las instituciones y en los mismos facultativos una transición efectiva de la presencia a la distancia, no propiciada de manera emergente, sino efectiva, considerando cuáles son las mejores prácticas, las estrategias, las técnicas y cómo observamos el assessment a lo largo de toda esta trayectoria en cada modalidad. Así que miramos el aprendizaje, el blended learning también, y discutimos entonces todo el proceso de valoración de cada modalidad para llegar a una evaluación efectiva. Consideramos aspectos bien importantes como la diversidad, porque como dice García Areito, la población es masiva, diversa y dispersa. Así que el aspecto de considerar esa diversidad es muy importante y trabajar con la inclusión y con la accesibilidad en línea. Estos son tópicos a, a grandes rasgos que vamos a tocar en Teaching and Learning. Así que sean todos bienvenidos. Gracias. Eh, gracias, eh, doctora eh, Lukumi. Thank you to Dr. Lukumi for her um, introduction on, on the topic that she will be uh, addressing uh, next. In the agenda is uh, Dr. Hilda Colón Plumey, and she is a retired professor and former vice president for institutional field relations at Middle States Commission uh, in, in uh, the East Coast. And she will be uh, providing an overview about the accreditation in English and Spanish. And Dr. Colón is also a colleague from, from previous battles, as we used to say in Spanish. So go ahead, Dr. Colón. Thank you very much, Carlos, and thank you all for being with us this afternoon. It is a real pleasure to meet with you together this May afternoon and invite you once again to join us in this academy. We're going to be doing this uh, project as a joint venture, and you might be wondering why should we, as the leaders in academic technology and learning technologies, be interested in the accreditation processes. Well, accreditation is really crucial to all of us that work in higher education and, and any, I think at any level, because it's kind of a surrogate concept, an interesting concept that for the quality, how are we doing? How are we reaching those goals that we proposed at the beginning and to which we are committed? Our countries depend on us. We, so all of a sudden we were practicing The, the same teaching learning model, the institutions were based on it, that we have had for centuries unquestioned and very, very productive. One day, from one day to the other, we had to change to the distance, just as Dr. Lukumi was mentioning. And all of a sudden, all those resources that we used to view as certainly something to help us move through academy, but not the core of the academy, turn into the, into the main aspect of what we were doing. Accreditation 
as an arm, as a legal arm of the Department of Education in order to provide trust and, and, and commitment from the communities to the higher education and the higher education to communities and also the dispensing of funds so critical for the institutions to survive. Accreditation had always been something that was worked upon once every 10, eight or whatever number of years. Now it's in one, a day-to-day -day business because we needed to change everything and everything had to turn from whatever was the norm to a new, to a new status, to a new idea. So um, turning into accreditation and looking at it as a necessary skill, as a necessary knowledge piece, for experts in learning technologies turns to be also a, almost a challenge that we need to certainly conquer. As a, at this workshop, <clears throat> we will explore the need for academic leaders, hopefully most of, of you from HSIs and even maybe some MSIs to understand the need and the advantages of all types of quality assurance, of assurances and especially those promoted in higher education. Nothing farther or more boring to a good academician as in any disciplinary aspect, we're not used to that. That's not our turf. That's the turf of the administrators, but what is it that we want in our future life? What is it that we're striving for in our professional development? So it is a must for any academician that will consider taking part in the leadership role in our institutions, and we will deal with that using the model of the Institute of the Accreditation Agency that I know the best, but it's similar to all the rest of the accreditation agencies in the United States. And it's the middle states model. So we will look into it and see what it entails for an institution to go through this process and come out of it successfully. So that's, those are, there are several concepts, important concepts in terms of budgetary issues relationships within the university and the state, with relationships within the university and the federal government in the United States, relationships between the administration and the components, the main components, considering the context, considering everything that's going around us and in, in this ever-changing environment. So this is really um, taking us to a different level, a different type of conversation, and we will make it happen because it will be done in a very interactive way. We will be role playing, we will be exploring models, we will be exploring scenarios and just getting related with what's out there because it's an ever evolving process. So I'm really, really happy to join all these wonderful colleagues that will teach me about learning technologies. And I hope that we will all learn a little bit about accreditation and share it successfully with all of you. Muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros. El tema es de acreditación. Se preguntarán, pero ¿por qué acreditación? Si yo lo que quiero es ser un líder en la academia, en mi nuevo rol que quiero desarrollar, y yo soy una experta en tecnología. Pero es que el mundo nos cambió en un día. El mundo no se nos transformó en las manos. Y pasamos de ser las personas que daban sostén a la academia a ser el corazón de la academia, a ser entonces el, la razón por la cual nos comunicábamos con los estudiantes, las normas cambiaron, cómo se pasa, cómo se consigue que la productividad continúe, todo cambió y el tema de acreditación tuvo que evolucionar rápidamente también. Así que el tema de acreditación que estamos explorando va a ser un poco basado en el modelo que más yo conozco, que es el modelo de Middle States Commission on Higher Education y vamos a estar trabajando en una forma interactiva, una forma retadora, una forma colegiada para que todos nos sintamos cómodos, yo quiero aprender de tecnología educativa y espero que ustedes también aprendan a apreciar el tema de acreditación y lo que este puede hacer por ustedes, por su universidad y por sus estudiantes. Muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos hoy y nos vemos en agosto, estoy segura. Buenas tardes. Gracias, Hilda. Thank you, Hilda, for, for the overview about um, your topic in regards to accreditation um, in the context of the Leadership Academy. Next in the in the sequence is uh, Dr. Alice Casanova, and uh, she will be talking about professional development. Dr. Casanova is the Institutional 
Academic Dean of Distance Education at EDP University. And I think she will be in Spanish. So uh, Alice, por favor, adelante. I know it's yeah, thanks to all. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be part of this innovate and necessary initiative. For the past 15 years, my line of research has been the professional development of faculty. So during my topic, we are talking about why and how to create a continuous learning culture in our institution, what we need to do it. We are going to work on hands-on in an exercise uh, to create a need assessment and also how to create a learning culture for the improvement of each institution. Also, we are going to start the creation of a graph or a professional development plan and it starts with the needs assessment and also finish with the calendar of professional development activities. Eh, hemos creído siempre que el centro ¿no? de nuestras instituciones es el recurso humano, es el más importante. Así lo reconocen las agencias, tanto licenciadoras como acreditadoras, y los planes de desarrollo son importantes para ellas y para nosotros como, como líderes. Así que invertir en el desarrollo de nuestra gente es importante para poder obtener los resultados que queremos. Durante el tópico que, que me corresponde, que es el desarrollo profesional, vamos a trabajar o vamos a crear un instrumento para poder identificar esas necesidades en nuestras instituciones y vamos a finalizar con un borrador de lo que pudiese ser un plan de desarrollo eh, y, ¿por qué no?, un calendario de esas actividades. Gracias a la doctora Casanova. Thank you, Alice, for, for the overview. Uh, next is uh, item number seven, if you will, topic number seven, which is data for digital learning. And on that uh, subject, we have Mr. Javier Zavala, who is director of the Office of Planning, Institutional Studies and Accreditation at a University of Puerto Rico Bayamón campus. So uh, you can take it away, Javier. Good afternoon. Well, good afternoon to everyone. My name is, uh, as Dr. Morales said, Javier Zavala. I have been working for uh, institutional research and statistics for the last 29 years. Uh, I know that I look so young, so don't worry. Uh, but uh, for me, I have to tell you, uh, it's a, a really, really, really honor to have the chance to share with all these colleagues and this community. Uh, uh, I have the chance, you know, uh, for many, many years to uh, help uh, decision makers uh, to have the information that they really need uh, for that uh, process. So uh, in the next, you know, August, I will try to share with you and I have an exchange of experience and knowledge about how uh, we can get data, how we manage that data, how we organize that data, and how we can use all the tools that we have, you know, right now, but we have a lot, a lot of technology that have great tools so we can, you know, publish all the information and get the information. But at the end, I think that the most important thing, uh, thing for me is first of all, that the administrator have the information that they need for the decision-making process. And that information has to be uh, accurate, have to be in a timely manner, and also uh, as the role that we have, we have in some way to explain the information to everybody. So everybody have the same knowledge about when we are speaking about retention indicators, everybody know what is a retention indicator. So I will, you know, develop that kind, you know, of uh, of uh, of knowledge and exchange with you in that uh, in that uh, opportunity, and also at the end, I would like, you know, to uh, develop the concept of how uh, to develop a, an institutional culture of information and data. 
So uh, I'm very excited to have the chance to share with you uh, in August. So if you have any doubts or you need more information, I uh, will please, you know, to have the chance to uh, share with you. And I, uh, at the end, I will really, really appreciate all the information that you give to me so I can, you know, learn for all your experience. Eh, voy a cambiar ahora al español, ¿verdad? Porque Hetz es parte, ¿verdad? De una comunidad eh, eh, hispana y anglosajona. Así que, eh, como les dije, he trabajado por los últimos 29 años en educación superior, trabajando con investigación institucional, con datos estadísticos. Eh, eh, pretendo en esta oportunidad excelente que me han brindado de compartir con todos ustedes y toda esta comunidad de aprendizaje poder eh, desarrollar los conceptos de cómo yo identifico la información como líder que necesito en educación, cómo la desarrollo, cómo la entiendo, cómo la manejo y al final cómo entonces la hago pública para que entonces todos en nuestra comunidad de aprendizaje tengamos un mismo conocimiento. Espero poder compartir con todos ustedes eh, en agosto y estoy a su disposición para cualquier duda o más información que sea requerida por cada uno de ustedes. Nuevamente agradezco, para mí es un honor pertenecer a esta primera academia de Hetz. Así que muchísimas gracias y que tengan todos muy buenas tardes y los que están todavía tempranito, pues muy buen día. Eh, gracias, Javier. Thank you, Javier, for the overview about, about the topic on eh, data for digital learning. Um, next one is eh, project management, and that is my topic. Um, I am I am very excited, like my colleagues, uh, to be part of the academy, and uh, the topic on project management is one that will focus on uh, ideation. It's also uh, an aspect of forecasting, planning, and of course project management. All of that grounded uh, with the concept of advancing an agenda for uh, the implementation, the adoption and the um, 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 advancement, if you will, again, of instructional technology and online learning. Um, institutions are uh, changing, they are adapting to uh, the, new, the new realities, the new world. Uh, there has been a, a reinvigorated uh, effort, if you will, in regards to digital learning and using instructional technology for teaching and learning. So. That aspect is uh, growing and requires a, a new set of uh, competencies and skills as uh, we create and develop those projects. Uh, the, the topic aims at using case studies um, and participants will receive information and certainly through all that uh, interaction and in the community, we will develop strategies that will help them uh, navigate uh, problem solving and also create high performing or high performance teams while we encourage a, a, a culture of trust that then leads to successful completion. Uh, the concept of project management is a concept that is applicable pretty much to all levels of education from K to 12 to uh, higher education. And we will be also including uh, examples uh, 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 and as I said, case studies that will not only provide the context, but also will allow us to get additional perspectives on how these uh, initiatives can be can be addressed. Um, I'm going to change to Spanish really quick. Um, me, toma, me toca el, 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 el tema de gerencia de proyectos y básicamente estaremos hablando de eh, eh, cómo, cómo desarrollar las ideas, cómo hacer los pronósticos en los cuales eh, nosotros podamos eh, tomar decisiones, podamos eh, comenzar eh, un proceso de planificación y cómo lo podemos robustecer en ese, en ese eh, 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 ambiente educativo. Eh, y obviamente pues el aspecto de gerencia de proyectos es otro, es otro subtema. Eh, la idea es que podamos... Eh, adelantar la agenda de, de inclusión de tecnología, de eh, eh, la adopción de tecnología y de que nuestras instituciones puedan continuar avanzando 
en, en esos aspectos para el beneficio de, de la academia y para el beneficio de los, de los estudiantes. Eh, el tema que voy a trabajar pretende que utilicemos básicamente eh, diferentes estrategias, incluyendo el estudio de casos, eh, que son ¿verdad? Pues, pues cosas más específicas que se han dado y que, y que podemos ver eh, eh, directamente ese resultado. Y de la misma forma, pues eh, buscamos proveer la información y estrategias para que puedan trabajar y enfrentarse a esos retos eh, y situaciones que tienen las organizaciones a la misma vez que se crean equipos de alto rendimiento, ¿verdad? Que, podamos, que podamos producir eh, eh, soluciones eh, que se adapten a nuestras instituciones de una manera eficiente, rápida y eh, completa. El tema pues, es uno que se aplica a todos los niveles, desde de, de, el grado eh, K al, al 12 hasta el nivel de, eh, nivel de educación superior. Y pues esperamos que que la audiencia se beneficie de, de este tema en, en general. Eh, so again, I am very excited about uh, be, uh, the, the, being part of the initial, initial or inaugural uh, uh, Leadership Academy of Heads. Uh, I, I am surrounded by a, a group of uh, fine professionals with, with decades of expertise in the topics that they have uh, uh, been available and willing to uh, share with the uh, membership of heads and beyond heads as well i'm going to ask you uh, if she can um, take it away on the next part and she will talk about the eligibility and the application process as well as the uh, panel that has been put together to uh, review the proposal so you you can take it away Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm going to be uh, very quick because we are ready with, together with this uh, launch of this event virtually. We also uh, make public uh, or publish all the information in our website. Now you can go to the website and you will see the HLTLA Academy menu in the home in the main menu. And you, when you click there, you can see all this information in more details. But I just want to Uh, to emphasize that the eligibility will be, uh, we are looking for participants from all divisions, including in higher ed, higher ed institutions, schools also, either public and, and private, and related organizations. And that will be, a, and each year we will be, our plan is to offer this academy every year uh, at the beginning, Bella, depending. Uh, how 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 it goes and then the spaces are limited since we want to we want to have groups that will be manageable for our resources our uh, faculty and also that you can definitely learn from each other at, at the faculty mentioned and it's open to individuals whose job is to promote and facilitate adoption of technologies either if you are working for our organization a school or uh, uh, institution Uh, the application process will be everything online and will be uh, before June 15 is the deadline to make the application. The application uh, in the form, you have to fill all the information requested and also you have to include or upload uh, in the application form a letter describing a possible project that you will be interested after gain all these skills and, and knowledge uh, for, from the academy, uh, what project you may want to uh, do during the semester, because remember the academy will be in August, so you will have the whole semester to do that. Uh, and you have to identify a mentor that you feel comfortable to work, work with and is available to help you with your initiative from your institution or could be from Uh, outside your institution, but preferably from, from your institution to help you implement this initiative. And a statement of purpose will be based on three questions that you will be uh, answering on the application, no more than 300 words per topic. And also you uh, will need to uh, submit Uh, in the uh, upload the, a letter uh, from either your president, chancellor, uh, or cabinet administrator, you know, the person you report to, saying the nominee's uh, qualifications Bella, for the program. And if you have any doubt, uh, we can definitely help you with that. In terms of the evaluation committee and selection process, this will be a competitive application process 
the, and the selection committee, uh, evaluation committee are senior staff at his member institutions in Puerto Rico and in the US. And um, what they are looking for when they will be seeing the applications is to uh, have compelling evidence to take in order to guarantee or uh, at least uh, assure that the participants selected can take full advantage of the academy. And they also are looking to create a participant group with diverse, not only experience, but also backgrounds and perspectives. Uh, the evaluation committee is uh, will is comp uh, constituted by different uh, senior uh, administrators like Dr. Marisa Ortiz. Uh, she's the institutional director of accreditation and licensing at the Inter-American University uh, Central Offices. Marisa, you're here, right? You can say hi so people can see you. I don't know if, if probably uh bueno she was here at the beginning hi uh, hi uh, okay yeah hi, you are here yeah. okay perfect thank you marisa for accepting this role we You're also welcome. have the of course thank you so much oh uh, we also have dr javier turner information security officer from california state university san bernardino and he's also with us today javier can you say hi so people see you hello everyone it's a pleasure meeting you and seeing you all this sounds very exciting. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, and thank you for accepting this role in, in the academia. We also have with us Dr. Sumaya Villanueva. She is the Assistant Provost of Academic uh, Engagement Office of Undergraduate Studies uh, at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, uh, part of the CUNY system. Sumaya, uh, you were here as well. Are you still with us? Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for this great invitation to participate in this academy. I am sure that it will be a wonderful and very inspirational venture for those that choose to apply and are selected. Excellent. Thank you so much, Sumaya, for accepting this uh, invitation. And we also have Mr. Hector Suero, he is the Educational Technology Specialist and Blackboard Administrator at the Albizu uh university san juan campus i don't know if he joined us at the end but uh, probably he is very busy right now so he will be joining us at this evaluation as part of the evaluation committee also we have miss chelsea cali she's the director of the simo online uh division uh as part of the south missouri state university and we also have dr lorena checa vice president Student Affairs at the California State University in San Marcos. Uh, she is used already, and um, I, I don't see if Chelsea join us as well. No? Okay, but those are the names, and they will be, as soon as we finish the application process and everybody submit, they will be uh, evaluating all these applications in order to, uh, uh, to select uh, uh, with the criteria. The fees uh, of, this uh, of the registration fees uh, were established, uh, were established uh, uh, or were approved by the executive committee after revising the expenses and effort that heads have to uh, put together in order to office this, uh, offer this program. The fees include all materials and all the continuing, and the continuing education certificate. And as you may see, we have always offering a uh, head member registration fees that will be $599 for the whole uh, package of all the mod models and, and courses. And for non-members registration fees is $799. And the executive committee feel confident that institutions, including K to 12, the like last kindergarten to 12 uh, schools, either private or, or public, can take advantage of these opportunities since the purpose of this academy is to promote and facilitate the adoption of teaching and learning technologies in this new academic scenario uh, caused by the pandemic, as you may know. And also, uh, since this is the main purpose of this academic, uh, the executive committee agreed that the uh, CARES Act funds that have been granted to almost all institutions including K-12 to can be used to cover this uh, registration fee for the participants interested in taking advantage of this opportunity. 
So definitely, we hope that you can, our goal is to notify the participants selected by July, so they can have enough time to process the invoices that will be issued, issued upon their acceptance to the uh, academia. So first you have to apply, and then once you are accepted, then uh, uh, we uh, help you to put together, Bella, send the invoice and help you to, uh, to cover the, the registration fees. And also payment plans will be available upon request. And we are considering uh, announcing additional savings on early payments, including also group rates for per institutions if they want a uh, uh, group uh, to benefit from these institutions. And also uh, say additional savings for non-members individuals uh, that could uh, take advantage uh, uh, and lower the registration fee for them. Uh, so feel free to contact us to learn more about this uh, or how you can uh, cover with that the registration fees in order to benefit and take advantage of this opportunity. Now, this is my last uh, and a more important uh, slide. Uh, uh, we emphasize that you have to apply before June 15 and you already have all the information in the heads.org website, Looking, uh, clicking on the heads. LTLA Academia menu. And now we have a few minutes for questions. So you feel free to open uh, your microphone if you have any questions. And our chairman here and the faculty are available. We excuse uh, Dr. Hilda Colon because it's her 50th anniversary today and she will be celebrating, but she take this time to uh, be with us. So hope that she have a great celebration with his her family, excuse me. But the rest are here if you want to clarify any anything about the topic. So feel free to either write your question on the on the chat. It could be in English or Spanish, no problem. And and also activate your microphone. So Carlos, is something that, something else you may want to add? Um, um, only just to reinforce um, pretty much everything that has been said, uh, we look forward to uh, the the applications um, and the interest from the audience. Certainly, if you know anybody that could be interested, share mm -hmm. share as well uh, along those lines. Uh, this is a leadership program that we are very confident will provide skills, knowledge, and opportunities for advancement and progression to uh, those uh, uh, in mid-level um, uh, roles at, at um, higher education institutions. Exactly. Preguntas, questions. Yes. And also I want to emphasize that we don't want uh, anything, Bella, if you are really interested in this opportunity, we can help you, Bella. Uh, we, you can download the brochure uh, you have all the information, so you can request uh, your if you're part of an institution, uh, we can help you requesting that they cover the restriction fee. So just let us know how we can help you be part of this initiative since this has the approval of the executive uh, committee and the board of directors that are constituted by the presidents of all member institutions. And the ones who are not members yet, don't worry, you can contact us and we can figure it out how you can benefit as well. I want to, I want to recognize uh, that in the audience there are uh, three members of my campus, so I appreciate yeah. their attendance and, and support on, on all these activities with you. Thank you. Thank you to the group. Excellent. I'm going to keep their identities anonymous so, you know, <laughs> they, they don't become famous all of a sudden. Lo voy a mantener este calladito para que no se vuelvan famoso. Okay, yeah. So I think we have been clear enough with the presentation. Also, yeah. let me emphasize that we are recording this and we will be sharing the recording. Uh, we will upload the recording on the website in the Academia uh, menu. And also we will be sending uh, more information through uh, by email uh, because not everybody, as, as you may see, could join us live. So because I think we, when you hear uh, people talking about uh, the topics and all the different details is more easy to understand than reading on the website. But any recommendations is welcome. This is our first edition. We want to learn from this experience. 
and we want to Vela, to make this a reality and help you on this, Vela, taking your professional goals to the next level. Do we have this? I yes. think there is a question from Dr. Pablo Rodriguez. Ah, sorry. He raised his I didn't hand. notice. <laughs> He's on the chat? No, he's ra he raised his hand. Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, I don't see it. Uh, go ahead. You can, can, do you have a, a microphone that you can activate? How are you? Thank you, Yuval Chris, and, and, ah, Pablo. and thank you all for this opportunity. This First and foremost, I want to um, congratulate you for this fantastic initiative, which I have no doubt will be of tremendous um, enrichment for faculties and other professionals as such. I am one of those who are also interested in, in participating in taking the courses and so on. So I wish if you or someone else could elaborate a little bit more about the benefits that we will uh, derive from taking these courses from the perspective of, in, of the certification and how that will help us uh, grow within the, um, academia and, and growth as faculty, as professional growth within the, our particular institutions. Thank you so much. And once again, congratulations on this fantastic initiative. Thank you, yeah, thank I'll, you, Pablo. I'll start, I'll start and, and others can help too. Well, one, one of the main uh, gains is the fact of all these topics combined in, in what I will call, you know, one, one package, right? Um, and while uh, many of the applicants may be experienced in, in one or two or three of those topics, the element here is how we uh, package that in a way that gives them additional skills and competencies that allow them to advance, uh, if, if that is the goal of the, of the person, right? At the same time, uh, providing perspective and strategies from the content side, as well as from the learning community side of things, because again, we will have a number of of, of members uh, 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 or participants, I mean to say, uh, in attendance and people always share strategies and people share situations that, that you know, gives you perspective and gives you an additional way of uh, addressing a particular problem. So uh, the learning community is a plus as well as strategies for for uh, those those in the in the academy uh, to advance if that is their interest so that's that's the way we we see it and uh, uh, um, it, it is also an understanding that the more competencies the more skills and uh, ways in which you can express and and execute those for others to see allow you for that advancement as well so uh, in a nutshell that is that is one of those things. I don't know if any other member of the of the faculty uh, would like to to add anything. Alguien que quiera añadir algo. It's important to to say that this strategy is created by leaders to meet the development of new leaders. So that in, in one step you can have a lot of themes that you need to develop new leaders in your institutions and then access. Yep. That's true. Thank you. You will kiss. Uh, I, I can Mark. add also that uh, this will be since the head's office is in the Inter-American University, our, is our host as a, our headquarters are there. We will be using the uh, continuing education office to uh, formalize the certification. Bella. They will be endorsing these uh, uh, topics and the certification will come from them. And if Francisco, you want to add something else, right? No, that, that's exactly that I wanted to, uh, I guess, for you to follow up on, on the continuing education credits that uh, will also be available. Um, not sure if we agree on, on the on digital batches. Um, if, we if are we still uh, investigating how we can do that as well. And that will be announced uh, during the, before we started, of course, if we can make this happen as well but i think the certificate the continuing education is very important 
there is, a, there is a question there is a question about the what type of i mean what type of projects will be considered um one of the one of the things that um hopefully uh, happens through through the uh, academy if you will is this aspect of either um projects are identified as new okay and that will be by by you know by the own uh, uh, participant based on the needs of the institution and based on the information that is being shared and again the community that that is uh, happening uh, uh, through through the through the networking that that's those those three are one way the other way is to what extent there are projects in progress or projects that are pending that then uh, uh, the participants uh, will benefit by by obtaining additional perspectives and the perspectives again come from the community from the information that we would be that we would be sharing so it is not limited at this moment is is pretty open but i think that as the topics are discussed and the faculty uh, go into each of their of their areas more clarity will be provided to those uh, 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 to, uh, to those aspects and questions And when you go to the application, the statement of purpose asks you three different questions that probably give you an idea where you can uh, do a, an initiative and, and, and you can select any of the different topics to work with this. And I don't know if Carlos mentioned, or I don't know if I forgot that the purpose of this initiative is to be showcased in the best practices conference that will be uh, offering a hopefully face to face, if we can come back by January 2022, face to face. I hope we will. Uh, during in a special track of all the participants of the academia, we will have this special track for the uh, to showcase all these initiatives that were the results of the uh, participants who Bella uh, took uh, be part, were part of the first edition of the academia. But you can, uh, if you need more information, please let us know. Uh, in the website, you will find all the information. How many continuing education credits will be earned participants who complete the program? That's an excellent question. If you multiply A courses for three hours that are uh, three or four hours, between three or two, four hours that are the, the synchronous presentations that we will be having, uh, from uh, August 4 to August 6, the goal is to have two presentations uh, per, uh, bueno, two, uh, bueno, we have two at actually one day because we have two per day uh, and we are four topics. At the beginning, we started with this, but we start adding when we discuss with the faculty. So that's a good question. We just realized now that it's eight. Uh, for two, two presentations per day. So it's going to be uh, 24 hours uh, contact, contact hours. And we have to consider uh, if, if the project will be having uh, additional hours to uh, the continuing education that we, we, we are talking to the person in charge to see because that person will be uh, developing an initiative, how we can measure that in order to give you uh, at the end of the project, also continuing Bella education uh, for that. We will be that 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 will be announced later. But at least um, three or two, between three to four hours per topic will be the the total of those uh, uh, the Bella, the the continuing education. Is that answer your question? So every ten hours is one credit, so around three credits of continuing education, right? Any other questions? Ah, you already answered what type of project. Yeah. I think that we are complete. Yeah, I think we are. So we don't want to keep you any more uh, time. Thank you so much for attending. Carlos, if you want to the closing remarks. Just to thank everybody for their attendance. Thanks to the faculty that were also here this afternoon and also to the uh, review committee that will be having the task of selecting the inaugural uh, um, uh, cadre quorum for the uh, academy. So yeah. be well and thank you. And we look forward to seeing your applications uh, for the academy. Yeah. Be well.
Yes, remember you have until June 15. Let us know if you need any information. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Take care.